But there's another sad story that I want to bring you now. Uh, John is learning that a second year student of the Oyoko Methodist SHS in the Eastern Region has died. The female student is said to have collapsed while writing an exam yesterday and was pronounced dead at the hospital. Correspondent uh, Maxwell Kudeko has been following up on this incident and joins me uh, via Zoom. Maxwell, thank you very much uh, for your time here on The Pulse. Uh, do we know, is it clear, what, what is the cause of death? Well, it is not clear exactly what um, caused the death of this young, beautiful uh, Jennifer Toku, who is 80 years of age. Uh, Jennifer was pronounced dead on arrival at the St. Joseph Hospital in Kofodia, Efidiasi. Now, uh, uh, sources tells us that on Tuesday, um, Jennifer reported to her mistress that uh, she is suffering from severe headache. So she was given uh, first aid at the uh, sick bay in the school and never reported back to the headmistress whether she's recovered from the headache or not. So yesterday, uh, when they were writing their final their exams, that's a literature paper, we were told that uh, Jennifer collapsed. So um, uh, her peers and the uh, school teachers around tried to resuscitate her, but it came to naught. So she was rushed to the uh, St. Joseph Hospital in Kofodia, but Jennifer was pronounced dead on arrival. We were told, we are told that uh, Jennifer okay. used to be one of the most favorite um, by singers in school. She, she was a member of the school choir. And then she was very lively, full of life, always smiling, even at the greatest provocation. So Jennifer was pronounced that it is not clear what caused uh, her uh, early demise, but uh, hospital authorities or head or officials at the St. Joseph Hospital are here to commence um, a postmortem or autopsy on the body to determine what caused the death. Because she died on arrival, it has become a police case. So um, before I joined you online, headmaster of the school, uh, Mr. Frank Eyal Kumsin, um, was or is currently in the conversation with the Ghana Police Service. He, in fact, he is in a meeting with the Fijasi Police Command together with the parents of the deceased. Now, the police is here to uh, ascertain exactly what happened before the young lady passed on. Mm. So presently, uh, young Jennifer Doku is no more. Maxwell, uh, quite detailed information there, but I'm wondering, the Ghana Education Service has uh, released a, a guideline for schools uh, that are done with examination on how they can uh, allow their students to go home. Uh, has the school recorded a case of COVID-19 or have some people suspected of having the virus? And I don't know how this uh, guideline affects them. We cannot connect the death to coronavirus. Um, school authorities uh, informed us that the, the second year students are supposed to leave campus today. I think that their last paper uh, was written yesterday. So if you check most of the, the lorry station, you you see that a lot of students are trooping in uh, the station to board bus to their various destinations. So ideally, second year students are supposed to leave campus by close of today. So it is not readily connected to coronavirus. We can't say that. We are waiting for the autopsy or as it were, postmortem from the hospital. But what I can report clearly is that we are confidently informed that Jennifer complained of headache on Tuesday uh, to her mistress. She was treated, she was given some first aid drugs. She went and never reported to the school authorities or the ministry whether she was okay or not. And mm -hmm. so yesterday, uh, when she, she collapsed at the exams uh, hall and was rushed to the hospital when she was pronounced dead. It is not clear as to whether uh, the, the, the death is connected to COVID-19 or not. Mm -hmm. But I can also not speak to a clear-cut rules for discharging students or second-year students who finish 
uh, their exams ye yesterday. That, that, that is fine, Maxwell, so, because the Ghana Education Service has released, uh, uh, what do you call it, a guideline to help the schools. But I'm wondering, quickly, just before you, let, uh, you, go, you take leave of us, uh, what is the mood on campus? And you've been monitoring the schools. As far as COVID-19 is concerned, uh, how did they observe the protocols? What kind of reports from the Eastern region? Well, well if, if, if you check um, the video I brought uh, earlier at the Oyoko Methodist, you realize that uh, the safety protocols uh, are being observed religiously in most of the schools. Mm. The exam centers, uh, as especially the exam scores, have been, uh, the decks have been arranged in a manner that is difficult. It, all of us who have written exams will testify that in, in the exam so we observe proper social distance so that you cannot pull your neck and copy your fellow. So the distance is very clear at the various exam centers. If you do not have no marks, you will not be allowed to enter the exam hall to write the exams. And almost all the exam halls, um, mo most of the halls have uh, Veronica bucket with running water. So with regards to the hygiene protocols, it has been observed religiously in most of the schools that we have monitored so far in the Eastern region. Thank you very much. That's Maxwell Kudeko. He is our Eastern region correspondent, uh, bringing us some more on the story from Oyoko Methodist Senior High School and generally uh, the adherence to safety protocols as far as COVID-19 is concerned. That's